overview of fusion applications since you you must already be knowing it what is fusion and how did it come into picture we we merged all the best features of other ERPs including Oracle's own ERP e-business suite like PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, Siebel and these were the major players in their different streams like Siebel was for CRM it was a very major player so Oracle acquired these companies and uh, merged all these features into one single application that is Fusion Applications and uh, Fusion Applications has this embedded analytics all throughout uh, the Fusion Applications uh, you will be seeing this embedded analytics this is BI uh, analytics that is available so we have lot of dashboards uh, like it was not there in EBS we have lot of lot of dashboards available here for any and everything we can build our own dashboards we can customize our own dashboards and we can do play around with with the application and we can do anything then we have something called as fusion middleware so uh, Oracle is running a lot of servers behind the scene and there are multiple applications or multiple servers that are running for different different aspects for security it can be different for role management it can be different and for workflow we have SOA based AMX uh, which is used for handling the approval we have BI business intelligence and we have uh, ICS for integration services so we have lot of middleware components that are available which are uh, doing different things behind the scene so to implement the Oracle applications uh, we need to do all these things and you must be hearing a lot of lot lot of things about cloud that Oracle application is in cloud so Shilpi since you are working on the cloud uh, can you can you give us a brief overview what a cloud what do you mean by cloud what we do mean by cloud here hi Ashish hi hi so um, having the application on the cloud um, you're not hosting the server and I think it's hosted on on uh, the internet so you access the application through the internet correct Correct, right, absolutely. So uh, to host this application, we need a lot of things. We need servers, we need storage devices, we need VMs, virtual machines, we need the operating system, we need the database, and we need the middleware component. So in EBS, uh, since you will be, you you have worked on EBS as well. So you must be remembering that we used to have a lot of DBAs and system administrator, the database administrators and the apps DBS used to maintain the application who used to do the patching cloning upgrade cycles and all those things used to be done by the DBS and there were system administrators who were maintaining the servers and the operating systems now in cloud we do not need all these things we don't need to maintain any of these things all the uh, maintenance related activities are taken care by Oracle themselves so whether it is patching uh, whether it is cloning whether it is backups all all these things are taken care by Oracle itself we do not need to maintain anything it is as simple as you access a website through through a browser like you are opening a website you will not know where the application is hosted an application can be hosted anywhere it depends on which location your client is and uh, Oracle has around seven locations across the globe I'm not sure if they have recently increased it but uh, till last year it was around seven locations in US in Canada in some place in Middle East Australia and in India we have uh, Oracle location where the applications are hosted so it depends on which region you are the Oracle hosts the application on that in that particular region now uh, we have three concepts when I talk about cloud what do I mean by cloud and you must have obviously heard about SaaS, PaaS and IaaS and I will be telling you the difference between SaaS, PaaS and IaaS and how how do we go along with the cloud so I have often seen people getting confused about uh, SaaS what is SaaS what is cloud what is on-prem so I'll, I'll be covering the difference and between these things now on-premise first of all I want to tell you we do not have on-premise at all in fusion applications we do not Oracle uh, provided uh, on-premise version till release 9 
release 9 was the last on prem version earlier oracle used to provide uh, every three releases they used to give a on prem version but now we do not have any on prem everything is hosted on cloud now we do not have an on premise option first thing second thing this saas pass and is all three are cloud services so when i say cloud that means it is saas pass and is and uh, saas stands for software as a service pass stand for platform as a service and ias stand for infrastructure as a service so it depends on your business requirements uh that what kind of service do you need from oracle and what what kind of licensing do you need do you need the hardware as well along with the application so you can go and uh, like you can host that particular application and anything so what is the difference between saas pass and is here saas is it involves a ready made application to be used by its end users so in saas model cloud provides you with the installed and basically you get the application which obviously you have to implement it we as consultants we have to implement the application but we get the application installed we just get a username and password we log into the application and we start implementing and then using it so i don't need to install anything we don't need dbas to install that particular application in saas so that is software as a service they give the application as a software as a service while in pass in platform as a service it also gives you the computing platform other and as well as the middleware component so if you want to perform any kind of customizations so you can do any kind of customizations but then you have to go for saas licensing you cannot customize the application in saas licensing okay now uh, i do not say people also get confused uh, that if they go for saas they can't integrate the system with other systems no so in saas application it is completely integrated it can be completely integrated with there are other applications there are a lot of web services exposed oracle has lot of apis that are available you can integrate by different methods using different etl tools you can integrate the application with other applications everything is possible in saas even lot of uh, personalization also we can do we can change the look and feel we can Uh, make fields mandatory we can make fields optional we can change the name of the fields a uh, lot of things we can do in the saas as well but if we want to build new pages new custom pages like in ebs we used to use java for building new pages or oaf in fusion applications we use adf application development framework so that is the framework that is used to build the custom pages so we use adf application development framework we build the pages on uh, pass there is also a new technology that has just come up uh, about in about last year oracle calls it as oracle jet and in or using oracle jet also you can uh, build the oracle using oracle custom screens or custom pages uh, those pages are quite user friendly they will be very nice looking the only drawback that oracle jet has is it cannot handle Uh, like if if the data is too huge in number it cannot handle that properly so that's the reason oracle decided to move the pages from adf to jet but it's not have uh, able to handle huge volumes of data so currently we we have everything on adf application development framework and uh, there are other other uh, tools as well to build those pages then we have ias infrastructure as a service so it involves your hardware and software combination to build everything on your own now uh, i talked about on prem what is on prem is you buy your own servers you buy your own uh, virtual machines you install all your uh, softwares on top of it and everything and then you use that hardware so you can install multiple since it's your hardware on your location you can install any application you want you can just uh, build on top of it infrastructure as a service oracle gives you the hard hardware sizing so when we go for saas licensing we do not get the uh, server access 
we do not get the database access we don't get anything but if we go for platform as a service we will get the database access and if we go for infrastructure as a, a service we will get the server access as well so you will get blank servers you can go and play around with it you can install whatever applications you want you can host your own applications if if client is using multiple applications for uh, multiple things so you can host your applications on Oracle premises as well so you get the infrastructure all the maintenance related activities like your uh, server maintenance is there your backups are there everything will be taken care by Oracle you don't have to do anything in that now what do you get what what are the key differences between SaaS pass and IaaS so the first point here is what you get in SaaS I'll, I'll start with the from the right side we have SaaS pass and then IaaS in SaaS you get the pre-installed and pre-configured package as per your requirement is given so uh, it depends on what client wants and it also depends on what kind of uh, Oracle when they issue the licenses they ask you in which region you are what what will be your default time zone what will be your uh, volume of data so uh, depending upon all these things what streams you are wanting to buy the licenses for financials procurement and anything I'll come to the streams as well what streams are available in the application so Oracle also asks these questions that uh, what what uh, volume of data will be aware because Oracle will give that hardware sizing to you it will give that server capacity if the volume of data is very huge like for few banks it goes into billions like hundred million plus data so if the data volume is very huge which is flowing in or flowing out Oracle gives you that server capacity obviously the charge depends upon the server capacity as well they, they will charge your slight extra if uh, your hardware sizing is huge and then uh, or you will get a pre-installed package of the application as per your requirement and uh, we get all these all these modules available in the application which I'll talk about in a bit and we can just go and enable those modules and start implementing it so we get the pre-installed package everything software and everything is available for us but when I talk about pass we also get the platform to build upon it so like what what do I mean by platform here is we also get the middleware access so we have middleware components like I talked about uh, ADF application development framework or if we want Java as a service or if we want uh, like uh, we have SOA AMX engine where we customize the workflow so in SaaS we cannot customize our workflows in EVS you must be remembering everyone you, you can easily go and customize your workflows and everything but in SaaS application we cannot customize our workflow so we need to go for pass licenses in that case so we need to go for the platform as a service where we'll get access to the middleware components whichever middleware component you want and then we can go and do the customization so you get the platform to build upon it then we have infrastructure as a service you get as I talked about you get the blank infrastructure or the blank servers where you can go and play around with it criticality next point is so a complete package of service in SaaS applications and pass in top of is uh, top of IS 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 the basic layer of computing is your infrastructure then technical difficulties uh, in IS obviously you need some kind of technical knowledge you need your database administrators as well uh, if you want to in uh, install a lot of applications into it and in pass you need basic setup is provided but setup uh, but subject knowledge is obviously required if you are building custom pages and all on, on ADF and then in SaaS you don't need the technical knowledge here you can just go around and use the application so in SaaS you have just the application in pass you get all the uh, databases runtimes web servers and everything in IS you get virtual machines storage servers network load balancers and everything so all this is provided by Oracle but you then have to on top of it you have to install the applications and all, all the things is, is has to be done by you Okay, any questions in this particular slide? Uh, Ashish, um, the, yeah. Um, yeah. if, try, if uh, the client has a custom application which needs to mm -hmm. be integrated with EBS. So which needs to be, sorry? Which need to be integrated with Fusion, let, let us say. Um, so, how, 
So they need to take the license of SaaS and as well as PaaS. No. So uh, if you are uh, you you don't want to uh, dec- decommission the existing application, right? You still want to use it, but you also want to implement Fusion and you want to integrate that application with Fusion, right? No. Uh, let us say if you want, if the client decide everything to be on the cloud, even the custom application. Okay. First of all, we we have to check for the feasibility whether it is even feasible to build those kind of customizations on cloud or not. Right? If it is, then yes, they have to go for pass licensing. Okay. If if feasible, then uh, then the customizations is allowable on that uh, custom application. Am I right? Correct. Correct. Then we have to go for pass licensing. And in fact, let us say in AR and receivables application, which is a SaaS application, can we customize? Um, assuming that we have pass license, we can customize. We can customize. We can build custom screens. We can uh, we can do we can do the customization in pass licensing as well. Okay. Uh, we can build a new screen and integrate with the SaaS receivables application. Yes. 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 We can. We can. And when you are accessing it through SaaS, the front end users won't even know whether it is deployed on PaaS or on SaaS. So we can we can customize and we can do anything. I can see another participant has just joined. Uh, Jay. Jay, hello there. How are you? Hi, hi, Jay. Hi, how are you? Well. Good. Um, I'm just wondering. Sorry, I'm a bit late. I'm just I'm trying to get some other stuff done, but it's finished now. Um, is this the section? Is this the um the GL section we're doing today, or is it something else? Uh, today we are just doing the basic uh, overview of Fusion applications. Okay. Fine. And the security model, the enterprise structure, the basic navigation stuff. Okay. So this is what we are going to do today. Okay. Thanks. Jack, can you give a quick introduction about yourself? Of course. Yeah. So basically, my background is legal technology. Um, so I've worked for a number of law firms as a um, contractor. Um, and now I'm moving into the Oracle space. Um, I did a really small bit around the e-business suite, but that was about 2007. Um, my oh, background. Five. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah on. So I did. Yeah. I did very little on the e-business suite, but a long time ago. Um, I do have financial experience. So in terms of the GL APAR from an um, ACCA perspective, which I've applied to the financial systems, which I've worked on in legal. Um, so kind of my background is warehousing. I'm a developer, basically, but I have accounting knowledge. You know what I mean? Right. Right. OK. OK. So the kind of things that I get challenged with when moving to things like um, uh, Oracle is some of the terminologies such as, you know, the, um, uh, the chart of accounts, how the chart of accounts works differently in here um, compared to other systems, you know, primary ledgers, secondary ledgers um, and stuff like that, which is a bit different along with the segments uh, and various other things. So I'm trying to gain an understanding functionally of the Oracle side so I can apply my my experience to that and then apply functional knowledge and then consult with customers basically. Right, right. So we will be covering all of those things but not today. In the okay. next session, we'll, today is just the basic overview and the basic navigation and everything and then yeah. tomorrow we'll be definitely covering all the chart of accounts and ledger stuff. Okay, that's fine. Great. Okay. Uh, just to give you a quick overview in in few seconds, what we have covered yeah. so far is about the cloud applications. What is cloud? Yeah. Okay. And now we are going to discuss about the modules that are available, or or I'll say the pillars or the work streams that are available in Fusion applications. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have these pillars that are available in Fusion applications. Everything is separately licensed. We have Fusion CRM customer relationship management, which talks about and deals with all the customer related activities like your sales, marketing and CRM activities. So you have a complete different product line for CRM. Then we have Fusion Project Portfolio Management and we have various module inside Project Portfolio Management like your project costing, project billing, project accounting and project control. So all, all of this is used to maintain if you are entering or doing any project related, you're maintaining any project activities in the system. Mm-hmm. Fusion PPM, we call it as Fusion PPM. And then we have Fusion Procurement, which deals with all your purchasing, self-service procurement, uh, sourcing, if you're doing any sourcing related activities, supplier qualification so you're creating buying anything uh, you're creating the requisitions you're creating the purchase orders and all all of this happens inside the fusion procurement and fusion supply chain management uh, your order management cost management costing inventory related stuff happen in your supply chain management our area of focus for this particular training will be fusion financials management and i will be discussing all of these modules in detail gl ap ar 
fixed assets and cash management so we will be discussing all these modules in detail and we will be covering first we will be uh, doing a kind of small implementation and the way i structure this training is i will be covering the terminologies then i talk about the process flows how does the process happens i will talk about the concept if i am going about uh a certain setups in gl i'll talk about the concepts and then i will go about uh doing those setups and then we will also go to the transaction screens and how to use those setups so in this training we'll build our own chart of accounts we'll build our own ledger own uh gl setups all general sources general category whatever setups are there we'll build all of them and including the payables we'll create our own business units where we can all do our own transactions okay so when i talk about fusion financials i will go to the next slide as well oracle revamped these pillars and they call is as saas applications or erp cloud when we go for financials they also call it as erp cloud enterprise resource planning so they revamp these pillars under erp enterprise resource planning we have financials we have revenue management we have accounting hub reporting we have project financial management we have uh, procurement and risk management so these are the modules that are available and under financials obviously we have all the taxes apr glfa and everything under supply chain management we have logistics manufacturing order management and inventory management all all supply chain planning product master data management and everything similarly we have for hcm human capital management we have global human resources talent management compensation management and all other things for cx uh, customer experience we have marketing sales services cpq and other things and before epm side uh, there is another application uh, not not it is not fusion applications but this is all the hyperion related stuff financial consolidation and close finance fccs epbcs account reconciliation planning and budgeting so oracle has epm as well oracle acquired hyperion some time back if you must be knowing it so uh, we we will be talking about all the financial related modules under the saas applications now i will give you a overview of these module a gist of these modules quickly what what all these modules are about what is general ledger yeah, uh, can you can you explain what what is your understanding of general ledger is that for me yeah 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 so the general ledger is consolidation of the sub ledgers after postings into the general ledger so you have all of your chart of accounts so you got your balance sheet accounts your profit loss accounts of which you pull off a number of statements reporting statements trial balances and so forth profit and losses etc etc so it's the culmination and the consolidation of the sub ledger into the general ledger basically exactly exactly perfect answer so what if i have to explain you what is general ledger see in in throughout the application we do transaction all across these modules we have these small small modules like payables receivables asset management these we call it as sub ledgers whenever i refer and say sub ledgers i mean one of these modules and whenever i say general ledger it is the gl module so these sub ledgers we do lot of transactions in in for if i take an example of account payables we do payables invoicing and payables payments into it now these will result into certain accounting entries which will flow into your general ledger now if i want to know our supplier related details our supplier related balances the payments that i have made uh, the liability that i have incurred or invoices we will go and run the reports from account payables but if we want to know asset related details detailed what is my depreciation for this particular month uh, if if you don't know depreciation we'll cover it but uh, what what is the asset cost and everything we'll uh, discuss that but if we want to know the accounting related to just assets or details related to assets we'll go to each individual sub ledger each of this sub ledger transfers the data to your general ledger module and we generate our financial statements and reports from gl module so if we want to know business as a whole so we want to run our financial statements that is your pnl or profit and losses cash flow statements or balance sheets we will run it from your gl module so all pnl and balance sheets will run it from gl but individual uh, module related data we can run from individual module as well right so account payables 
talks about your payables, your supplier related data. So you maintain your suppliers, so from which you are procuring or buying the goods. So all it talks about your invoicing, supplier invoicing and supplier payments. Asset module talk about your uh, asset management, your fixed assets management. So it talks about your depreciation, amortization and impairment of your asset. All, all asset cost on how do you add an asset and everything maintain your asset. So it talks about everything. Then we have account receivables, which talks about your customers, your customer invoicing and your customer receiving. So you receive the money from customers, applying that money to your invoices, knowing the customer balances, how much amount is due from which customer pending invoices and everything. Account receivables talks about that. And then you have cash management expense management we will not be covering in this uh, session we have something called as expense management or i expenses uh, we will not be covering the expense management but we have cash management so cash management basically talks about the reconciliation now what is reconciliation uh, if i have to explain you uh, it is the reconciliation of money that comes in and goes out from your business so we receive some money when when we do the receivables activities when we sell something we receive money for it and when we buy something from our suppliers we have to pay money for it so we can reconcile that money uh, from uh, cash management we upload our bank statement it is nothing but your bank reconciliation process what we call it as brs or something bank reconciliation statement so we reconcile our bank statement with the payments that we have made and the money that we have received from our customers okay